all the fancy letters after my name because of teachers who really took an interest in me mm -hmm. as an individual. Um, I didn't get a lot of policing at home about homework, and my teachers are the ones that really said, wow, you know, you could do a lot and you're going to do it, or wow, you could do a lot more than you're doing, so <laughs> get in shape. But I can list memorable teachers that really put me here. Mm -hmm. And after a good number of, of years teaching in the classroom, elementary and middle school, I thought, well, I'm going to be the person who teaches the teachers. And it's a privilege of mine to have been able to do that for a, quite a long time. the kids. I went into teaching uh, first in elementary school because I love the content. Mm -hmm. As a kid, I loved the content. I loved to write social studies. I loved social studies. So what came as a surprise to me, because I knew I loved the, the stuff to teach, I loved the content, was how much I loved the children. Mm -hmm. And it was a pleasant surprise. It was unexpected. Most teachers that I know, most of my students would say, well, that was the first thing for me, that I love the kids, and it wasn't for me. So I like to think that good teachers can come to the profession for all kinds of reasons and in different ways. Well, I remembered as a student teacher, we had a reading methods class, Mrs. Fremling. We all called her Mrs. Friendly. <laughs> and I looked up to her a lot. And she was really a den mother of sorts for us. And I remember at least once thinking um, in graduate school, I want to be her. I want to be just like her. And then I got to the point with, with my teaching where I realized this is the time to start, to start working toward that. And that's when I enrolled in my doctoral program. I know in one um, school, I was teaching fourth grade, and I was having the kids do a lot of partner work. And when I had them do partner work, I would put them with people that they didn't necessarily get along with well because they needed to learn how to do that. And I put together two kids, um, Ari and David, and they didn't get along well at all. It was a, a girl and a boy. And they would squabble and come to me and say, well, we can't do this. Well, we can't do that. And I'd send them back saying, well, you have to do this and that and come back when you have something to show me. And after days and days of this, one day, Ari said to David, well, we better go and ask her. And David said, and I heard this, David said, oh, we don't need her. We don't need her. And that was just really great, because <laughs> we want to be needed as teachers. But for him to say, no, we don't need her, he was saying, we can work this out by ourselves. And I think in the moment, he meant cognitively, in terms of what the task was. but. What was implied was that, yeah, and we can work together to do that. We don't need her. And I think that taught me a lot then also about teacher educators. We, we want our students to not need us. Uh, we want them to be able to think like teachers and to learn from their own teaching so they don't need us. And that's, I think that's where it should be. It's really been a, a privilege to get to, to work with to be part of uh, hundreds of young teachers' education, uh, professional education. Um, and that could be that I've affected some teachers who didn't care for me in class. You know, you're not going to hit 100% all the time. But I'd like to think that they all took something from me in their classrooms that made a difference. If it's one thing, one big idea that made a difference in the practice of hundreds of teachers, considering how many children, students that they affect. Was it, um, it said that teachers do touch eternity, and, and I believe that that's true. So knowing that I had something to do with a lot of teachers' practice, in a good way, I'd like to think, and then how kids learn, it doesn't get better than that. It just doesn't get better than that. I think I made an impact at the college because I worked with these terrific people. The ed department, everyone just knows their stuff, they're very personable. We're very different personalities, but we're all on the same page in terms of what it is we want to do. And I think being in a community in my department of people who are like-minded in that regard helped me be the best I could be. Um, 
well, we're never the best we can be, but really helped me grow as a teacher. I think I would want to say to people who are not teachers, and even people who are thinking about it, we don't get three months off in the summer. We start thinking um, by mid-July about what we're going to be doing. Some of us think about it all during the summer, and it's productive thinking. Uh, we're all 24-7 teachers and 12 months a year because you just that's how we breathe. That's what we do. So our summers are not free. So if you think that uh, teaching is easy in terms of the hours, no, no, it's just not. And a good teacher works all the time and doesn't do the same year 25 or 30 times. A good teacher has 25 or 30 very unique years based on the kids that they had. Just to let people know that this is the best life there is. It's a real blessing to be called to be a teacher and it's really hard work if you do it right. If you wear a lot of hats in your personal life, I grew up dancing, being in plays, um, big reader, everything and every everything you are as a person can find a place in the classroom in appropriate ways. And you get to wear a lot of hats, especially elementary teachers. We wear all kinds of hats. I can wear my artist hat, my dancer hat, my fractions hat, some things you just love to teach, fractions, I don't know why, my kickball hat. Um, you can just be a lot of yourself in the classroom. And uh, you need to be a very varied and interesting person to be um, motivating for kids. And they love that about us if we're passionate. It's just fun to be who you are and know that you can wear all your hats and that's a good thing.